Hello and welcome to the Aspen short video on enteral nutrition indications in patients with specific non-GI diseases. I am Dr. Peggy Gunter from Aspen and will serve as the moderator for this presentation. Our first speaker will discuss enteral nutrition in the stroke patient. She is Arlene Oscuro, Advanced Practice Dietitian in the Center for Human Nutrition at the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland, Ohio. Our second speaker will discuss enteral nutrition indications in patients with cystic fibrosis. He is Brian Strang, a clinical pharmacy specialist in nutrition support at the Tucson Medical Center in Tucson, Arizona. Information for this video is from the Aspen Consensus Statement, When is Enteral Nutrition Indicated, published in 2022 in JPEN. This video is brought to you by Aspen and supported by Cardinal Health. Enteral nutrition in a stroke patient. The learning objectives are to understand the effects of dysphagia as a major risk factor for malnutrition in stroke patients and to explain the role of enteral nutrition support in acute stroke. Mr. Thompson is a 68-year-old male who presented with left middle cerebral artery stroke due to left internal carotid artery stenosis. He was taken to surgery for left carotid endarterectomy. Paralysis in the right side of his body has progressed since surgery. Nursing conducted a bedside swallow screen where he failed the test and showed signs of aspiration. Speech-language pathology was consulted to further evaluate his swallow function that showed significant oropharyngeal dysphagia. 25-50% to 50 of acute stroke patients suffer from dysphagia and that early detection is a cornerstone in the treatment of stroke. It can lead to complications such as malnutrition, aspiration, pneumonia, dehydration, and poor physical function, which can have a negative impact on the patient's treatment and prognosis. After swallow evaluation, nutrition interventions such as a modified diet, oral nutrition supplements, or enteral nutrition support should be implemented. Malnutrition diagnosis after an acute stroke can range between 6 and 62%. It is therefore important to screen the patient on admission for malnutrition and reassess regularly if there's a change in patient's condition. For patients who can take nutrition by mouth, oral nutrition supplements should be considered, and tube feedings may be the sole or supplemental source of nutrition support for some stroke patients. It is recommended to start enteral nutrition early using a small bore nasogastric tube if the patient's swallow function is not likely to recover within seven days. Post pyloric feeding is recommended when there's evidence of upper GI dysfunction or delayed gastric emptying. It is also recommended to evaluate the patient for a nasal tube retaining system to prevent tube dislodgement. There is limited data on specific timing of PEG placement and factors that impact the timing of the tube placement. However, current guidelines suggest PEG placement in patients with persistent inability to swallow for longer than two to four weeks. For a case study, Mr. Thompson tolerated a bedside feeding tube placement and his nasogastric tube was secured using a bridle. He underwent a modified barium swallow study after a week, but the study did not show improvement in oropharyngeal dysphagia. After goals of care discussion with his family, Mr. Thompson underwent PEG-2 placement and was discharged at an acute rehab facility. And finally, acute stroke patients should be screened for dysphagia prior to providing oral food, fluids, or medications. Patients with dysphagia should be fed through an nasogastric tube if oral intake is not likely to recover within seven days. And if dysphagia persists for longer than two to four weeks, a PEG tube should be considered. Here are the references, and thank you for listening. Hello, today we're going to be talking about enteral nutrition indications in patients with cystic fibrosis. My name is Brian Strang. I am the clinical pharmacy specialist in nutrition support at Tucson Medical Center in Tucson, Arizona. At the end of this activity, you'd be able to identify the indication for enteral nutrition in a pediatric cystic fibrosis patient and also determine the appropriate route of nutrition support in a pediatric cystic fibrosis patient. So today, a 16-year-old female with cystic fibrosis presents to the pediatric CF clinic. Her parents state that she appears to be losing weight despite consistent oral intake and the addition of oral nutrition supplements over the past three weeks. She doesn't report any symptoms of nausea or reflux, and today her BMI check falls into the 45th percentile. Her last BMI check was in the 48th percentile, but previously in those last two years, they ranged from the 50th to the 55th percentiles. Pediatric patients with BMIs less than the 50th percentile should be started on supplemental enteral nutrition support to help maintain weight and growth goals. 
Initially, a trial of nocturnal enteral feeds via an NG tube can be initiated. This can be inserted and removed daily for short-term use, usually less than three months. If the patient at that point responds to enteral support with an improved BMI, you can trial them off of enteral feeds and continue to monitor their BMI and growth status. After eight weeks of nasogastric feeds, your patient presents again to the clinic for follow-up, and her BMI is in the 47th percentile. The patient and her parents both confirm she's tolerated the NG feeds without nausea, vomiting, or any reflux symptoms. Because her BMI remains less than the 50th percentile, however, placement of a G-tube for long-term nutritional support is scheduled. In summary, enteral nutrition is indicated in cystic fibrosis patients who are unable to meet their nutritional needs with diet and oral nutrition supplements alone. Nocturnal gastric feeds should be the first line approach unless the patient is experiencing symptoms of reflux or gastroparesis. A nasoenteric tube can be used in the short term to assess the need for and minimize complications from a surgically placed long-term feeding tube. We appreciate your listening to the Aspen short video on enteral nutrition indications in patients with specific non-GI diseases. For more information on this topic, I encourage you to read the asthma consensus statement, When is Enteral Nutrition Indicated? in JPEN 2022.